Last week, we asked you to ask us everything you wanted to know about the LG G Flex 2. Well, I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, here with your answers. Quick note, folks, our full video and text reviews are live now here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com, so feel free to check them out for more in-depth coverage. Also, if your question isn't answered by this video, tune in for our special G Flex 2 episode of the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast, going live Friday, February 20th at midday Eastern. We'll be taking your questions live on the air. Follow us on social media so you don't miss it, and look it up here on YouTube or on your podcasting app of choice if you already have. That being said, let's get down to your most relevant and upvoted questions. Lunatic Fringe asks, does it overheat? This is probably the most common question concerning the G Flex 2, and the short answer is no, it doesn't overheat. But that's not necessarily good news. From what we can determine, the Snapdragon 810 inside the G Flex 2 does indeed tend to run hot, and because of that, it's throttled often and heavily by the software. That tends to make for more lag, stutter, and hesitation than we like to see on flagship smartphones. While it's not always a problem, it's very frustrating when it does crop up. The good news is LG is aware of this issue and has released a statement regarding it, which you can read in our full review or our video review, and we've also pasted it in the video description below. Petrus B asks, is it easier to pocket than similarly sized phones, specifically the LG G2? I don't have a G2 on hand to test against the G Flex 2, but it's definitely an easy phone to pocket. Obviously, that's true for the back pocket, where the Flex can more closely conform to your posterior, but front pocket carriage is actually pretty comfortable too. It's important to keep in mind that a 700 radius curve isn't actually that dramatic, so it doesn't feel as awkward in the front pocket as many might think. The only time it actually does feel a little funky is when it's placed in the pocket with the curve facing out. So yeah, don't do that. SG Godsell wants to know, how does P-OLED look out in the sunlight? By which he means the P-OLED display. And the answer is, it looks great when you can see it. Despite using a totally different display technology than the G3, the G Flex has its same problem. It just can't get bright enough to overcome really bright sunlight. Those you can see on an overcast day, like the one we have here today, it does just fine. In the sun, though, you do have to squint a lot, and if you're using your phone heavily, expect the brightness to go even dimmer as the thermal throttling kicks in and disallows the brightest screen settings. Boat T wants to know, among other things, what the front camera quality and angle is like. In brief, the G Flex 2 has a serviceable selfie camera. It's pretty low res at 2.1 megapixels, and it's got the same digital artifacting problem as the main shooter in low light, but it's got a wide angle and a very dramatic beauty mode for covering up skin blemishes. So assuming you don't take yourself too seriously, which you shouldn't if you take a lot of selfies, it's a pretty solid selfie shooter. Fuyo N-Cube asks if we can address the average screen on time and battery life. And the answer is, both are really struggling on our F510S demo unit. With moderate use, I've never gotten past 3.5 hours of screen on time, over 16 hours uptime. This is directly tied to the performance issues mentioned before, and we're hoping LG is able to correct all of it with software updates, because for now, it's not a great experience. And finally, McDowski asks what he calls the only question that matters. Is it worth getting? And not just in a it's pretty good if you want to be different kind of way, is it good enough to get over other flagships? The answer is contained in our full review, but in the spirit of not copping out, I'll preview it here. In brief, I would consider the G Flex 2 in its current state if I really, really wanted to be different. But even then, I'd wait to buy it until LG fixed some of the issues discussed in this video. For more on that, yep, you guessed it, check out our text and video G Flex 2 reviews. If we missed your question in either this video or our review, once again, tune in to Pocket Now Weekly episode 136, where we'll be talking even more about the LG G Flex 2. Also, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube, and as always, thanks for watching. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, thanking you for your questions and tweeting more G Flex 2 tidbits on Twitter at Captain Two Phones. See you next time.